Today's episode is about exposure value. Is EV still relevant in today's world? I'm going to talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. Ask your own photo questions. I just might pick it to answer right here on a future show. Also, you're already watching on the Adorama YouTube channel. I hope you're a subscriber. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell to get notifications as soon as videos come out. You'll be the first to know. Let's get right to today's show. I got a question from Rory H., and he wants to know, what is EV as it relates to exposure compensation and how is it used in photography? I often see values like plus or minus 5 EV. So EV is one of those kind of old school terms that's been around since the beginning of photography that may or may not be relevant in today's world, but I think it's important to understand what it is and it'll help you to gain more confidence when dealing with your own exposures. Now there are two kinds of EV values. There's relative EV and absolute EV. Rory's question is really about relative EV which I think is a bit more useful than absolute, but I'll get into absolute a little bit, little bit later in the video. But first, let's talk about exposure. What we're referring to when we talk about exposure is just how bright or how dark your image is. And exposure value is just a measurement of that brightness. Now, if you want to increase your exposure, plus one EV, for example, you can choose how you want to get there using any of the three settings that affect the brightness of your image. You probably know we're talking about the exposure triangle. Those three settings are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now they're measured in stops, so often you'll hear photographers refer to as, you know, change one stop up, one stop down, close one stop, open one stop. Those are just the measurements of those three settings, but most cameras are set actually to change exposure settings in third stop increments, a third of a stop for each click of your uh, setting, you know, when you try to change it. That's going to give you the most control because it gives you a, a much more, a smaller increment that you can move your exposure. You can tell if your exposure is set up in third stop increments by how many clicks it does take to get from, let's say, a 60th of a second to 125th of a second. If it's three clicks to get between those two, then each click on your camera is set as a third of a stop. Um, you can go in, some cameras will allow you to change that to a half a stop. I prefer to stay at a third again for control. Now over time, uh, the more you shoot, you just sort of memorize the numbers, at least the full stop increments. So shutter speed, for example, a 30th of a second, 60th, 125, 250, each one of those is a one stop difference. Aperture, the numbers are a little weirder because it's actually a measurement inside of the lens. So we're talking about f4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and on and on in both directions. And with ISO, it's a bit easier because it's literally just half or double the previous number. So 100, 200, 400, 800. That's based on the old film uh, sensitivity settings. You can buy different films rated at those numbers. So they've stuck with that in the digital world. Now, when we're talking about EV, plus one EV, for example, is one stop brighter than your previous previous exposure. And like I said, there are three ways to get there. You could, for example, slow your shutter speed down one stop. So if you were at a 60th of a second and you slow it down to a 30th of a second, that's one stop slower, you have now given yourself plus one EV. You've increased your exposure value one stop. Your image is going to be one EV brighter. Uh, same thing if you want to do it with the aperture. If you open up one stop, let's say from 5.6 to f4, you have now increased your exposure, your brightness, your exposure value, one stop plus one EV. And of course, the same with ISO. If you're at 100 ISO and you go to 200 ISO, that's plus one EV as well. Now, again, remember you could go in third stop increments, but I'm just keeping the numbers as simple as I can here. Now, if you need to change more than that, just more than one EV in either direction, you have more options and you can mix and match. But the reason you would use one setting or another is really more based on creative decisions, not on exposure when you start getting into, you know, how you want to make that change. So let's, let me show you how this works in actuality. So uh, we're in here in EOS Utility in the computer, Canon EOS Utility. I've got a camera set up here. It's the 5DSR Canon 5DSR 50 megapixel camera. I've got the 85 1.4 lens on it and I have it pointed out of frame, you can't see, to my brand new Manfrotto tripod and ball head, which I'm very excited about. So um, I wanted to photograph it here. Now, you can see, of course, my settings, and it's way too dark. Let's look up here. I'm at 1 8th of a second shutter speed, f16 aperture, and 100 ISO. And the image is way too dark. So let's say I want to bring this exposure up 5 EV. I want to go plus 
5 EV. Now, of course, I could just change any one of these settings to make it five stops brighter. Let's say, for example, here, if I go up in my shutter speed and I want to change that five stops slower, right? I'm at eighth of a second, and each of these are a third of a click. So quarter of a second is one stop. Half a second is two stops. One second is three stops. Two seconds is four stops. And four seconds is a five stop difference. So I have now opened up my, slowed down my shutter speed, five stops, giving me plus five EV. And that frame looks pretty good. Now, I could change this differently. If I didn't want to go to four seconds, I could change my ISO, for example. Let's do it real quick here. Let me go back to eighth of a second, right there, right there. <laughs> and if I changed my ISO five stops, so from 100 to 200 is one stop, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. Now I've changed my ISO five stops. I am again at plus five EV. So from my original frame, I went five stops using different settings, but at the end of the end of that, I am still plus five EV from where I started. And the picture, the brightness of the image is exactly the same, no matter which one of those I change. Now, of course, I have options and I can mix and match. I don't have to go to four seconds, for example, and by just changing one variable. Now I have this camera locked down. It's on a super clamp and a magic arm, also Manfrotto super clamp and magic arm. So it's not moving anywhere. I could shoot it four seconds, no problem. But if I was hand holding, for example, I obviously wouldn't want to do that. So let's go back to my original setting here at 100 ISO. And um, let's start with shutter speed. Now, again, I, I want to move my shutter speed a little bit, but maybe not too much. So if I start at an eighth of a second here and I only go down, let's say, two stops. So now I'm at a half a second, right? So I've slowed down my shutter speed to EV, right? I've changed my exposure, I should say, to EV. I'm not quite there yet. I want to get to five plus five EV. So I want to keep my ISO, let's say, relatively low. So I'm at 100. Maybe I'll go to 400, right? That's a two stop difference. So now that's plus two more EV. So that two EV plus the shutter speed to EV, I'm now at four EV. I'm at plus four EV from where I started. I want to get to five. So of course, then all I have to do is go ahead to my aperture and move that three clicks to F11. That's a one stop difference. And now that exposure, if you compare this exposure to any of the other ones that I did where I only changed one of those settings, the brightness is exactly the same. They are all at plus five EV from my original frame. So it really doesn't matter which settings I change as far as um, brightness concerns, if, as far as exposure, because it's going to be the same for all as long as I get to that plus five. That's why you, EV doesn't always, you don't, you don't always, you can't transfer that expression with stops. You can't just say five stops because you might want to move five stops with one, but not with the, you know, you might want to go two with one, two with the other, and one with a third. So they're, they're related, of course, but maybe not exactly interchangeable in all cases. But either way, it doesn't really matter how you get there as long as you get there. You, like I said, you would make changes for creative reasons. I didn't want to shoot it four seconds, so I'd rather shoot it a half a second. That gives me a little more stability. So uh, therefore, I'm only going to go the two stops on my shutter speed. I only want to go to about 400 on my ISO, and then I can bring down my aperture, excuse me, open up my aperture just a little bit to get there. So that's how relative EV works. Now, absolute EV is a little bit different. Absolute EV is based on this formula, which looks very complicated, but all it does is it simply assigns a number, an EV number, to different brightnesses of a scene. Now, the formula uses shutter speed and aperture only uh, because the standard assumption is that you're using 100 ISO. Remember, this is an old school formula. Everybody was pretty much shooting at slower ISO, at lower ISOs back then. Um, so it's based on 100 uh, ISO. Now, you can Google EV charts. They're all over the web and you can look up all the numbers at, at corresponding shutter speeds and apertures. But what you need to know is that the higher the number, the higher the EV number, the brighter the scene. So you're going to need to use a darker exposure to expose that scene properly. If you think about this in the real world, maybe a bright sunlit day in the middle of the day, EV is going to be around 15. And using the formula, EV 15 can be a bunch of different settings. It can be a thousandth of a second at 5.6, 
or it can be 1 25th of a second at f16. Both of those setting combinations have the same EV value because you're slowing down your shutter speed three stops, right? You're going from 1,000 to 500, 250, 125, um, and that makes the image 3 EV brighter. That's plus 3 EV, but also you're closing down or darkening your aperture three stops from 5.6 to 8, 11, and 16. So those two setting changes together mean that you haven't changed the absolute exposure value, the absolute EV at all. You, like I said, you would only change one or the other based on creative decisions if you want a shallower depth of field or a faster shutter speed for creative reasons, but not for exposure. So at any absolute EV value, you have a number of different combinations of aperture and shutter speed. Absolute exposure values are really, they're kind of interesting, but maybe not super useful in today's world. You know, if you're just starting out, it's kind of nice to maybe use those charts to get your exposure close if you're just guessing, but um, it was maybe more helpful in the film days when you couldn't see your image, or if you're shooting film, of course, it's a little more helpful. But with digital, you can just shoot a frame and look at it, and then just tweak it until you get the exposure you want. And, you know, understanding relative exposure, is it is it useful in today's world? Well, not really. Most photographers are going to use the back of the screen or the camera meter or the histogram or combination of all three to judge our exposure. The cam now, the camera manufacturers sometimes use EV values to describe things like dynamic range um, or how well they can focus in low light, how well they can autofocus in low light. A dynamic range of 14 EV means, in theory, that the camera can capture detail over 14 stops of exposure value. And autofocus in minus 4 EV means it can pick up focus even when it's really dark out. So you'll see those numbers sometimes listed in there. But really, unless you're an engineer who works with light sensitivity, most of us are not going to use EV to make images on a daily basis. It's kind of interesting to understand, though. So Rory, I hope that helps. I'm not sure where you were seeing those numbers exactly, but I hope that answers your question wherever it is you were seeing that. Hey, do you guys use EV values in your photography? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, of course. Uh, go to AskDavidBergman.com, ask your own photo questions there. I am doing this every week. I'll be back here, as always, next Monday on the Adorama YouTube channel, 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll see you back here next time. I hope you join me right here on Ask David Bergman.